Now you enter, came the voice, as soft and sibilant as he'd imagined it would be. Hassan stirred out of his memories. He couldn't see the speaker. He guessed it was the same man who'd showed him into the antechamber. He looked up, seeing that the second set of doors had opened. He hadn't noticed them unlock. The mechanism must have been extraordinarily smooth. He rose awkwardly. He could feel patches of sweat under his arms and around his collar and hoped they didn't show. His limbs felt stiff, as though he'd forgotten how to walk and needed reminding. Once through the doors, he passed into a vast sunlit chamber. One entire wall was given over to a long, unbroken expanse of glass. Circling mountains broke up the horizon beyond, glittering white in the sunlight. The floor was polished parquet. Eclectic items of furniture dotted the cavernous interior. A Louis Kahn's armoire stood next to a Unity-era lith projector, overlooked by a series of Hjort oils and a cabinet containing priceless Ming and Waywood ceramics. It reminded him of a magpie's nest, a collector's den, ostentatious given the circumstances. Hassan was alone. The room was silent. The doors closed behind him, moving together as quietly and elegantly as they had opened. For a moment, he stood still, listening to the sound of his own breathing, wondering if the things he saw around him were even real. Perhaps this was a test. Perhaps he was being shown one final glimpse of glory before the end. Hassan knew they could have pronounced their judgment at any time. He had already given them all the information he could. He had been most careful about it, making sure the details were correct. Even in his failure, he had not stinted nor tried to excuse himself. That had always been his way. Honesty, even in disgrace. Such, of course, were the values of the Imperium, the basis upon which his loyalty had always been commanded. Time passed. No one else entered the room. Hassan began to lose his sense of slow foreboding. He walked over to the windows, standing close to the glass and resting his fingertips against it. The vista spread out before him, a dizzying sweep across the palace's western marches. So much gold. So much of everything. Vertiginous battlements plunged like cataracts into thickets of bone-thin towers. Colossal buttresses soared up from the bones of the mountains, massive and eternal. Even Lord Dorne's heavy alterations along the outer walls hadn't obliterated all of the palace's old and innate beauty. Gazing over such vastness, it was hard not to feel strangely insignificant. The walls had already stood for centuries. They would endure for centuries more. A beacon of splendor amidst an expanding empire of mortal exaltation. I liked it better before Rogel really got to work. The voice came out of nowhere. Hassan spun around, scanning across the chamber. He was still alone. The voice seemed to rise from the air around him, echoing from the panels and sinking into the fabric of the woven rugs. It was a strange voice, mournful in tone, rich in timbre, cracked by age. I do not see you, Lord, replied Hassan, feeling stiff and stupid. No, not yet. I cannot be in all places at once. We may save some time this way. Does it unsettle you? Of course it did. Not at all. Good. Then keep looking at the view. Remember it. With every passing day, it will get a little uglier. A little more worn. Just like us, eh? Hassan turned back to the window. He wondered whether the speaker could see him. He assumed that he could, though one could never be sure. Throwing a voice was trivially easy. Such theatrics, as he well knew, were all part of the process. 
You are not a man given to levity, came the voice again. That is what the reports all say. Serious-minded. Diligent. I can sense that in you myself. You are the embodiment of everything the Emperor aspires to instill in humanity. He would admire you, I think, were he here with us. The voice did not sound disdainful. Hassan could hear harshness in it, a harshness bred from long ages of wearying command, but also other things. A grain of sympathy? Mostly resignation. It was all so very unexpected. I have always endeavored to serve, he said. I know you have, came the voice. I know you have. But now you are here with me in this place. What you have been in the past, what you have done in the past, this is the reckoning for it. Do you know who I am, Captain Khalid Hassan? I think so, Lord. I am the reckoner. I am the judge. I am the scrivener of the Imperium, the evaluator of its ocean of souls. Hassan couldn't decide why he was being told this. Boastfulness? Possibly. It didn't sound like boastfulness, though. It sounded almost like sarcasm. A dry, self-aware sarcasm. I am the Sigilite. I am the Regent of Terror. At my command, the fate of a million worlds is determined. And yet here I am, conversing with you as you look through my window and disapprove of my collections. Life is full of surprises, is it not? Hassan almost found himself nodding in agreement. It is, Lord he said. And you know why you are here? Because of what happened in Gyptus? That is right, came the voice. Think back, Khalid. Think back to what you did there. I will be with you soon. When I come, I will wish to know everything.